go now to Tala Kose, uh, a professor of political and international relations at Istanbul Shahir University, and he joins us now on set. Thank you very much, firstly, for your time, Tala. Now, we've just heard about what this... Um, the exemption from the European Convention on Human Rights means in terms of mm -hmm. Hassan's reporting there. But tell us a little bit more about Turkey's obligations to the European Convention on Human Rights here and why, in your view, has it decided to suspend the agreement? Well, I mean, uh, Turkey is bound with the uh, uh, European human rights uh, obligations. Uh, the problem now is that this is a very complicated situation. So if you look at uh, conventional threats, conventional terrorist threats, uh, if you look at the situation uh, where Turkey is facing, this is a very complicated issue. So now we are facing a, a military coup attempt, but the organization uh, which is, uh, you know, or junta, which is trying to uh, impose this coup has very complicated uh, structure and infrastructure, which is organized in bureaucracy, um, you know, um, legal uh, institutions, uh, civil society, media, uh, universities, and education sectors. So if you take this as a, you know, simple terror threat and put it into uh, European Human Rights Conventions, you may hardly deal with this threat. So this is a holistic threat. Every uh, issue, every institution uh, that is integrated with the uh, Gulenist organization are interconnected. So in order to deal with this uh, new threat, which is not, I think, foreseen in the uh, European Human Rights uh, Convention, you have to deal with is uh, much more complicated. So it deals with the uh, universities uh, to a certain extent, media, uh, social media, and including the civil society because they are very well organized in the civil society. They have institutions. So in order to deal completely uh, with this threat, you have to get into the details. You have to contain uh, all these segments uh, of this uh, complicated threat. So if you try to deal with the European Human Rights Convention, that will be very complicated and that would be uh, inefficient. So in order to make it as fast as possible and as efficient as uh, possible, uh, this uh, you know, uh, state of emergency uh, tried to disregard at this moment. Uh, but uh, as the ministers mentioned, uh, it will uh, really take much shorter than planned, not uh, three months probably. And they will not uh, take this into consideration the economic uh, field, and this will be just limited to this organization. Okay, if I can just jump in there. From what I understand, uh, during this state of emergency, mm -hmm. the president can mm -hmm. bypass parliament and mm -hmm. change laws potentially change constitution. Mm -hmm. Does this make way for the possibility of bringing back capital punishment during this period? No, I mean, if you, uh, if you listen to the uh, uh, Justice Minister's uh, declaration, he said, we would like to accelerate uh, the process, but uh, we will take them, if there's a law, uh, we will take it to the parliament and ratify it. So this is for just the purpose of accelerating the process but we will not bypass the uh, parliament. So we will get, give uh, extraordinary uh, rights uh, uh, to the uh, governors, uh, but uh, we are not planning to uh, you know, change the uh, parliament. You mentioned that um, things like media will be changing mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. period. So how will this state of emergency then affect society, the daily life, even though you said the economy won't really have mm -hmm. much of an effect? If media will be affected, does that mean that output will be changed and there will, won't be freedom of speech, perhaps? Uh, I mean, there are media institutions that are affiliated with this uh, organization. So most probably those uh, media institutions, um, you know, newspapers, TVs, radios will be restricted. And those uh, conventional uh, media uh, outlets that are uh, promoting or that are uh, creating some kind of sympathy to this organization may be restricted. restricted. So this will not be a holistic uh, media uh, crackdown or uh, limitation, uh, but specifically. And also if we uh, you know, return to the justice ministers, uh, this will not be against the people. Uh, we will keep it limited and but how, restricted. But how is it going to affect daily life and society? I mean, mm -hmm. Turkey is a very polarized place. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be a situation where we have perhaps 
one against the other, or is there going to is there going to be more divisions within Turkish society following this? Uh, I don't think so. So people, uh, most people, uh, are unified against this threat, and the opposition parties are also, uh, uh, you know, helping the government in this issue. So if the government uh, cooperates, uh, informs the opposition parties, media, and other. Uh, you know, civil society uh, about what they are doing, what they are planning to do. I think this will not create further polarization. So the risk will be contained to the justice uh, organization. So if this communication uh, measures, uh, communication process is done in a proper way, I think this will not uh, increase the polarization in Turkey. Okay, we'll soon see. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for that, You're Tava Kozer, uh, Professor of Political and International Relations at Istanbul Şehir University. Really appreciate your time.